Thank you for tuning in on Cop with Comic. I'm Brian Cop, and we're here with Comic Jonathan Kaplan. Jonathan Kaplan, how the hell are you? Doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. And you are just, uh, you're behind some of the big comedy product that I want to talk about. I find you, you're jcaps.com, but also um, you're Jonathan K, y'all. I'm Jonathan K, y'all, on Instagram. And then that takes us to a couple of your comedy products, which is Grading Animals and Mares and Caps web series. And I, I fucking, you know, first of all, I talked with uh, Joshua Pallet about grading animals, and it was hilarious. We'll talk about that. But also Mares and Caps, you sent me the pilot, and it's fucking hilarious, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's uh, such a long time coming for that to, to get realized, and especially with the, with the COVID, you know. And, and even with uh, the fact that Marianne and I have never lived in the same city except for, like, a brief period in, like, 2015 so we've always created um you know via email and via phone oh my lord so how did you film the scenes that you were together well uh in the in the original killing it web series that we made in 2016 2017 um she would just come out for the weekend and like we would write you know on we would write like at our day jobs and write you know our sketches and stuff like that but then, you know, when we were like, oh, right, we're ready to shoot, we just uh, get together like a shoestring uh, budget and crew. And then we shot the original web series in my apartment. So she would just come out and we'd like rehearse the fr on Friday and then shoot Saturday, Sunday. And we did that for those. But then she would move, you know, she lived in Boston and then she moved to Pittsburgh with her husband. So it was always, um, and to this day, like it's it's always just trying to get everything together yeah but you got it together man i fucking first of all the the other actors in there i want to talk about how you got them because they were amazing um she was she was great you know when she fucking i mean i didn't even realize she was kind of like a you know an actressy type person you know just like you know i kind of say theater kids but like she turned on the theater kid comedy meaning like she was just kind of normal at the beginning but then when she finally during the pilot kind of uh, you know, started to pursue her, her dreams or whatever. She instantly got fucking that, that actressy chops where she was just purpose, purposefully comical. Like it's it's almost not realism anymore. It's just more comedic acting, and she fucking nailed it. But then so did you, so did you, man. Oh, thank <laughs> like, you and, so much. oh yeah, and it was in in such a way where like it makes me want to see the other stuff because you're here playing with sharks or you know a shark and an orca or whatever the fuck it is in your cubicle but your cubicle for some reason was lined with fucking like aquarium paper or something you're like why the fuck is well, this guy like this i want to keep watching because this guy i'm is so glad that you picked up on it because it's so the web series format and even just this pilot you have such a little time to uh sprinkle the seeds of what's next or like yeah. make all the points and so that pilot is part of a full length well, you could call it like maybe like an HBO hour long pilot. But for us, it's a whole web series season, which we yeah. wrote. And we were so prepared to shoot the whole thing. We wrote it for like a year and a half. Like we wrote this whole script and we we slaved over it. And it was really an intense process. We even um, hired a, a script coach to sort of like boot camp us through writing better. Oh, okay. Because... And he was great. Uh, his name is Jim Mercurio. And he uh, he wouldn't what he would do is he would basically challenge us on all the things we wrote and we would just go back and rewrite. And it was really excellent. Um, but anyway, so we um, we finished this script that's like about 70 pages and it's tight. Like we're excited. We, and then we were like, oh, we're going to shoot it. And we didn't realize because we're so we're such naive idiots that we didn't realize that, that what we wrote would cost one hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> And that's so, your, to, to use one of your jokes in the thing, that's the money you use for smoothies. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> we um, we were like, we actually, in so in Pittsburgh, Mar Marianne, you know, you picked up on, she's great. And she also, you know, she's an actress and she's been in, like, if you ever see uh, the 2015 movie Joy with, um, what's her name? I forget the name of the actress, but she's super famous. And she's in Dave, David O. Russell movies. Um Oh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Yeah. She appears in that movie like 
a, a short part like opposite Jennifer Lawrence. Like so, Mar- Marianne has got chops. Like she yeah. she gets the job done. She's amazing. So um, she knows a bunch of people in the Pittsburgh um, film scene, and they, you know, we had done our web series pilot. We like set we set uh, we did um, a seed and spark campaign to like help raise money. We raised five thousand dollars, which is in terms of making a movie or whatever, nothing. Okay. But because of that, we did a bunch of screenings in, in New York and Boston and Pittsburgh just to, like, celebrate the fact that we finished our web series, you know. And um, we ma- made friends with people in the Pittsburgh community. So we, sh- we were able to get that crew and those people because we shot it in like, the off-season of, of their usual season of shooting. So there's a lot of, like... Oh. Like, for instance, I guess like in L.A., you know, you work 24-7. It's a whole industry dedicated to stuff. But like in Pittsburgh, there's like the boom time and then there's people who are not working. And so you can get them for cheaper. So wow. we we were able to shoot our pilot. Um, and, you know, you noticed that part where um, we have my cubicle. So like that does feature into what's next in the fix the fictional city of glitzburg but also it was a little bit intentional to like dovetail my two worlds of like people coming to the show from grading animals yes. will be like yes this is the same caps that we know yeah I, I got world. that i got that because can't work as kill the great white yeah yeah and so i saw that i was like dude that's grading animals man perfectly consistent with jonathan kaplan but also it's just like you're very i really i mean these are characters that i have to want to see again and jonathan kaplan is just fucking like an interesting motherfucker and i also am interested in that dynamic too and the smoothie joke just fucking hit perfectly but um but i love you're like eventually you're like yeah of course i'm gonna go with you fucking across the country because that's the kind of dynamic you guys have it kind of establishes what dynamic um you know the characters have is that i guess the dynamic is similar to real life or not really yeah well you know we tried to heighten well marianne and i come out of clown theater that's that's where we sort of met <laughs> wow. and like in that uh i guess they look at they I, I always think of clown as the the energy underneath the performer it doesn't have to be you know stand up or singing or whatever it is there's an energy that's in a person that's like their essence and that mm. is clown so like for instance when you're hanging out with like um maybe like your family and there's like a young nephew or niece and they are just charged on sugar at the family party and they're like, just want to play, you know? And there's something in that that we all have that maybe we subvert um, as we get older or have to be part of the world. But when we were coming up with these characters, uh, that those essences have, they can, they like glue to certain aspects of our personality and sort of, like you can easily see it very one to one relationship with like famous standups because they've created a persona that sort of connects to their like where they have fun, but also yeah. connects to these maybe you can consider bad aspects of their personality, you know? Okay. So like Marianne, like we we really turn up the volume on her like jealousy and her need to um need to have more than she deserves or whatever, you know, or like this attitude that, that, that you know? <laughs> And then for me, like, you know, there's an aspect of me that that like completely lives in fantasy, but I'm also, you know, maybe don't have the ability to pull the trigger on things. So we really, oh. she's a catalyst to my fantasy. And yet I sometimes have the, I can solve the problems that she can't. So that's. Oh. And so that's something that kind of happens, a li- you know. That's, you know, your each of your instincts kind of play that way in real life. And so you kind of played it up. And was that a conscious decision? You were like, let's make sure that each of us is um, fairly accurately portrayed on screen, if exaggerated, and also to make sure that dynamic is is reflected. And kind of how'd you, you know, I guess you ran into our clown school or whatever, but how'd you kind of know that uh, Marianne was the person to kind of go this 70 pages, $100,000, uh, this, this her- Herculean effort with? Well, you know, we had met in, we met in like 2012 um, at like a mutual friends show. Uh, and then I'd seen her perform and I thought she was so hilarious. Like she does these impressions of um, divas, but, <laughs> but just like not, act, not 
quote, accurate, just okay. like insane. And I remember seeing her at like a, a, a variety show and I was just howling. <laughs> then in like 2015, I was hosting a show at what was then called this theater, but like was actually the People's Improv Theater. Um, you know, remember the original People's, People's Improv Theater? I don't know how long you've been in the uh, scene. No. But, yeah, I'm just becoming it, aware that there's a couple locations there and there's maybe yeah, one in North, North Carolina. Yeah, originally on 29th, right. Okay. So then they stopped being it and, and they had a show. I was hosting like um, a show where like you would, I would invite whoever wants to come and perform and I would put together two actors, improvisers, comedians, whatever, and they would have to be on stage for 10 minutes, okay. no scene cuts, just being on stage okay. for a full 10 minutes and oh. just do one scene with this other person. And 10 minutes is a long time, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, especially if you don't have any previous coordination or writing or whatever. Exactly. So it was called Molasses okay. uh, because it was the slow jam. <laughs> and anyway, Mar Marianne would come every week to that and we, re we reconnected and I just loved how she played so we decided to start like you know uh, getting into a room and riffing you know just riffing ideas out um, and then she had to move to Boston so we would correspond and we did our first web series which is where we sort of worked out the relationship of the characters we have nine episodes of killing it and in those a lot of the I would say the pilot that you saw is based on those characters that we sort of uh, we're figuring out, which cool. are based 100% on us. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you kind of flesh it out and you discovered everything through a web series, Killing It, and that became, you know, I love that it's not only in the pilot and you wrote 70 pages of it, but it's nice to see that she's starting to, uh, she's already making an appearance on Grading Animals, which is just a fucking huge behemoth that grew out of Low End Gigolos, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, Low End Gigolos is just, you know, three guys having fun, and just enjoying messing with each other. You know, uh, Josh told you about, like, we met at Yerman's, which was this, like, cop bar in Queens. Yeah. And yeah. what was great about it was that it was very unconnected to the comedy scene. You know? Yeah. Like, especially 2017, 2018, that time has been such a, um, has been so strangling for, for comedians. Because any it's like uh, the thought police has reemerged, like <laughs> in, in 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 this country, and then you cannot think anything, or or you know, it's like even if you're trying to be safe, there's somebody with their arms crossed, hoping hoping that they are upset by something you say. Yeah. And um, so at Yermans, that th there just wasn't that. Like the crowd that would be there were just a little more working class and like didn't give a shit. And then the people that were attracted to it were also just down for what comedy is. You know, there's this thing that we like loosen our ties and enjoy things because life is hard. So um, we met and we sort of um, are the foundation of Low End Gigolos. It was just pure, um, I would think, I would call it like comic brutality, just having fun and fucking with each other and then like blending our three voices, Kevin Sanchez, Josh, and I, uh, Josh Pallad and I, and we all come from different uh, comedic worlds, but we really supported each other um, in a cool way because, you know, I have like a, this different like, like clown theater background and, you know, uh, we all come from different places, but like we blended it. So like uh, Grading Animals started as just, it was meant like, it was like mentioned and like sort of yes anded. So it was like somebody said one thing and then one thing was said other. And then five minutes later, we're on this long, you know, insane weed fueled, you know, <laughs> diatribe, you know? Yeah. And it's just genius, though. It's so funny, though, because you wouldn't think that Jonathan Kaplan would be the person who would have to go to a Yearman's. But, you know, because, you know, you look at grading animals or something like that and you're like, this is, you know. This could, you know, this isn't going to get anybody upset, but the fact that, you know, you went to Yerman's, you and Joshua Pallet and, and Kevin Sanchez or whatever you guys got together and you, you know, you yes handed one of the better ideas I've heard and it just instantly had me starting laughing, the fact that you would just create a fucking animal. <laughs> it's just every, you know, any aspect can be at play as long as it's funny, right? Like, you know, we, we brought up the example of, you know, you know, cows. Joshua Pallet said something like, well, I mean, 
that shows that they didn't evolve properly, man. They should have evolved into something not tasty because then nobody would want to eat them. Like it's just a shitty evolutionary animal. So like, you know, when you're creating animals, kind of how does, you know, each episode unfold? Like if I fire up an ep- you know episode of uh, grading animals with J caps, and of course I will, you know, what can I expect from every single episode? What's the commonality, even though the animal is different? Well, the, 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 the jokes are based on facts. I ton of, I think about it as if it's like late night writing where, you know, the headlines are the setup and the take on the headlines is the punchline. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like maybe, like maybe four or five episodes and I've done almost 70, um, but it wasn't long until I was like, well, okay, so here, just to preface that, uh, I, when I grew up and I, I got these cards from like my kindergarten that were these 1976 uh, animal safari cards that had like information for kids on them. Yes. And I have a box of like 500 of them. I've had them my whole entire life. Uh, and um, th- they're actually very uh, special to me, you know, because I'm actually, I mean, you can see it from the show, like, I'm an I'm a nature head, you know, yeah. big time. So I wasn't going to really lean on like the the premise of like oh a dumb guy who doesn't know anything about animals, you know? And also yeah. like it's it's um it's there's plenty of animal content on the internet. I mean, yes. like you could even draw a parallel to like the guy uh, the guy who made that video maybe, what, 12 years ago about the honey badger, right? Like, that's a guy just saying, like, the honey badger funny. I mean, it's got millions and zillions of views. Like, it's it's a, a great piece of internet ephemera. But, like, uh, I was I made a choice to, you know, find something interesting about the animal or the animal's story or something about... Like I started uh, grading trees this year. <laughs> I and, see that. I see that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, what I what what I found as I as I like researched was there's there's like a story to it all, and then there's also a, a bigger story about like ecology and the fact that like nature is is ending because of because the entire earth is used to benefit one animal humans yeah, right but there's other ways to to deal with that like you can deal with that in a in a bleeding heart way like we have to save the nature and like you know that way which is <laughs> one way of dealing with it yeah. and my pers- my perspective is to deal with that in a i guess like a joker-esque way like it's all like we're burning the world down and like, let's just like dance around the fire. Yeah. So, you know, I do have, of course, my perspective is uh, ecological, but I think comedy is like my primary uh, goal. So it's just, it just, that's like a unique flavor of the show that you do get. And I don't, and like, it's almost like, I don't know where it's going, but I just know that those are the ingredients. I love it. I love the fact they're ecological without um, being so PC. Save the animals where it wouldn't work at Yermans, you know? <laughs> Those well, people would be get fucking lynched, lynched at Yermans. But, like, have you graded humans yet? Uh, I've mentioned humans a bunch of times. Right. Um, you know, like, for instance, this, the first episode of my second season of Grading Animals was about the brown rat. And the brown rat is, like, it's doing great because it's <laughs> capitalizing on what's so people have this idea of what should be, yeah. but then, I mean, even in outside of talking about nature, in the world, people have this idea of what should be. They tend to not like what is, right. but like the brown rat is an animal that, that capitalizes on what is. Like what is true? Like humans are doing all this fucked up shit. So by the middle ages, before, before humans even really knew about brown rats, uh, you know, mot- like uh, Western humans, brown rats had already capitalized and were living and sort of getting a leg up on the rest of the animals by by infusing themselves into human affairs and becoming like, you know, using the city biome as like their new, the new place to proliferate. Oh, so yeah. 
so like in this time, what is a successful animal? An animal who is figuring out how to game the system. Like another animal that does that is the herring gull, whose herring gulls are like doing great. They're never going to go extinct because they're feeding off of the garbage that we create. It's yeah. like, I, li I like that though, because yeah, what is, I mean, I've read articles about, you know, think pieces about, Hey, you guys are worried about the extinct extinction of these 15 species or subspecies or whatever. And in the meantime, there's been this big boom of new species of things like birds, because, you know, they're, they're, they're also maybe capitalizing on the urban, the urban biome or whatever you see fucking sparrows garbage picking as, as, as well as pigeons. And so it's nice that you're going with what is, it's a nice twist on the whole, you could have gone all ecological, but you know, they see that you love animals and shit like that through the grading. And so if I bring up an animal, are you able to grade it on the spot or not really? Let's see. Let's see what I know about it. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Um, uh, random animals. I'm just going to pick one off the www internet. This thing is, a. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna. Ooh, what the fuck is this thing? Do you know anything about um, the Fommel? F O M M E L. Do you have the internet in front of you? What the fuck is that? Fommel. I'm gonna. I haven't seen it, but I'm guessing it's a type of fox. Yeah, it looks like a Fommel. Wicca. Um. Oh no, I don't. <laughs> it, it takes us into Erwin Rommel. Are you talking about the fennel fox? It's what well, it does say F O M M E L, but maybe that's something else. It's Pinterest. I've discovered random animals. Pinterest and yeah, Fommel. Fommel. Oh, it's a, and it, it's saying Rommel. Oh, it goes. It, I think it's a mashup. That's fucking stupid. So okay. So well, mashed I'll up. Say, I'll the say that you said the fennel fox. Okay, let's look up um, the fennel fox. Okay. And I'm just gonna say the fennel fox is a big-eared little bitch-ass fox. <laughs> um, you know, it's like if I were a fox nowadays. I'd probably be afraid of like pesticides. Um, but if you are a cool fox, like a red fox, you just do the same thing like we were talking about and start uh, going into uh, British cities, which, you know, uh, foxes are like um, an invasive species in, in uh, cities. Okay. In all over, like all over London and, you know, all of the, uh, in, the in, your, in England. But fennel foxes, I'm going to guess like they're still trying to hold on to their old school. Um, you know, living on a prairie, stealing chicken eggs and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's not going to work out for too long. <laughs> those ears, uh, so those ears will let you. C minus. Hear. I'm going to yeah. say C minus. Be definitive. Yeah, C minus. So I think it's the fennec fox I see, but the big ass ears mean it's a bitch ass fox because you can hear what's coming, but you're not really taking steps to ensure your survival. So, oh, wow. So I was wrong. I called it a fennel fox, which fennel is like some type of um, an herb or something. Yeah, vegetable. But I'm also, I'm, I'm the guy who called <laughs> so, up. Yeah, the famo is actually a cross between a fox and a dromedary, and a dromedary, I guess, is a sort of camel. So, so there's this pin, there there's this Pinterest that actually mashes up animals like fox and dromedary, and dromedary looks like a camel. But that's just so funny. And have you ever done like a tournament of champions? Like, who who do you find who's getting a lot of A's and who's getting a lot of F's? Like, is it just who's evolving to kind of uh, suit humans or not? Like, dogs are doing pretty well because they're humans' best friend. Well, you know, I. It's interesting. Like I have this attitude of like, what are the three things that I remember about how I do the show? And it's like the show is not to inform. That's a that's a secondary uh, a secondary. By like I my my main goal is to be funny. Good. Before next is I'm using animals to be funny and and all that sort of stuff that I um, we talked about just before, and like equal to that. Like if you imagine like a triangle, just on the other side of that goal is my desire for just chaos. So like <laughs> I'm not reliable. Like 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 we just saw, I don't know everything about animals. Um, I get things wrong if it's going to be funny. I will change the format of the show. I even have an episode where I have a double standard guarantee. <laughs> so yeah, like. I, yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll, I will get comments and, you know, I'm very grateful for, for the success that it's had. I mean, it's not like a huge thing, but like it's done pretty good. Um, but I will get the occasional like super nerd who like doesn't get it <laughs> and starts trying to like, you know, face value, talk yeah. to me about facts. And I'm yeah. just like. Wrong show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that because if you're looking to be entertained, he's the guy doing it. He's jcaps.com. He's Jonathan K. Y'all on Instagram, which will take you to things like Creating Animals, which has just thousands and thousands of hits per per episode. But also Mares and Caps is also on um, 
Instagram and that pilot is just fucking fantastic. I know it's still being polished up into perfect Technicolor and all that, but in the meantime, they can go see the Killing It web series or see, you know, Marianne and Jonathan, you know, Jonathan Kaplan and his friend Marianne uh, doing their thing on both grading animals and mares and caps. So Jonathan Kaplan, thank you so much. Thank you so much.